Hi there, I'm Tom Field with Information Security Media Group. Welcome back to this session. The topic today here is Live Oak Bank's best practices for safely managing its public cloud estate. Your speakers today are going to be Thomas Hill. He's the CISO with Live Oak Bank, and he's joined by Avi Shua, CEO with Orca Security. Together, they're going to walk you through this case study. So let me turn you over now to Thomas and to Avi. Gentlemen, stage is yours. Well, thank you very much. Um, so what I like to do when um, we do these types of presentations, I like to talk a little bit about who is Live Oak because we are unique as a bank. And, um, you know, telling a story around technology sometimes can be a little different for, for banks. And so um, Live Oak Bank, who we are is um, we are the nation's largest SBA lender, which is a small business administration. And we also have a, a new distinction of being the number one USDA commercial lender. So um, we lend in all 50 states. Um, we're a single branch headquartered in Wilmington, North Carolina on the coast. And, um, you know, we're a very young bank started in 2008. And so we do all these, we got all these great stats, you know, um, with only 650 plus employees. And so um, pretty impressive, but you know, how do we do that? How do we do that with such small number of, of people? And we do that because we leverage cloud technology and technology in general is a, is a foundation of our business, is, is part of our DNA. And so when you look at, you know, leveraging cloud technology and, and just technology in general, very heavily in your business, security is, is, is becomes critical. And so finding the right security partners is also important, including cloud and, and everything um, that goes along with that. And so why did we choose the cloud as Live Oak Bank? And remember, we're, um, you know, we're headquartered in Wilmington, North Carolina. We're on the East Coast. In the past couple of years, we've had quite a few hurricanes. So um, when we talk about availability in a minute, you know, that'll come together. But, you know, strategic value, there's absolutely reasons for strategic values of being in the cloud. There's a business enablement component. Um, and then we'll talk about risk management. So let's start with strategic value. Really, you know, a lot of people say that there's a great cost in ROI being in the cloud and choosing the right cloud. I agree with that. But really, the, the power of the cloud, when you talk about enabling your business, is speed to market, the ability to, to be innovative and be fast. And then the third one is scale. So those are probably two of the most important strategic values that, that you get when you adopt um, the right cloud. And you'll see that those kind of go across over into the business enablement. So when you have speed to market and you're able to be innovative, you can be competitive, which drives your business and enables you. And so those are great things, um, but as a security professional, you know, that can be kind of scary. So we've got to have some risk management. We've got to have great security controls. Um, you know, being on the coast or talked about availability, you know, picking the right cloud, you can be in many different data centers without having to manage your own data center. Um, so there's a great benefit there. Um, for um, availability. And then you can leverage the tools that's already native to the cloud authentication and maybe some vulnerability and man or vulnerability management and threat management controls. But I'll be honest with you, you know, considerations for cloud adoptions, if you, we've got a picture of some people here, you're trying to decide what they want to do. And, you know, I look at this picture and I'm thinking, you know, the security person is not there because, you know, typically we take a step back and say, okay, the speed bothers me, we're going to go too fast. You know, that innovation thing bothers me, we're going to go too fast, we're going to introduce risk. The reality is, is yes, you will. And, but it's what you do about that. So how are you going to manage that? vendor management, are you really going to get the return on investment, um, you know, contracts, intellectual property, are the regulators, whoever your internal auditors are, are they going to appreciate your business enablement strategy in the cloud? And then from the security perspective, how can you manage and secure all the things that we're going to be doing in the cloud? And so, you know, sometimes it, it, does, it feels, you know, like, like it's overwhelming as a security professional. And so, you know, that we talked about, you know, what are the, you know, the benefits of the cloud? You know, the greatest strengths, in my opinion, is that speed. But that can also be your greatest weakness, the speed. It can introduce a lot of risk. So when you have a lot of, a lot of speed and your developers and your infrastructure team and your architects are able to 
do cloud formation scripts and spin things up and down, do you really know what, what assets you have and what exists there? And, you know, the funny thing is, is that, you know, in a, in a modern cloud, in a modern cloud, you know, you don't always have an IP address for those microservices. You can't put an agent on, on some things. And so, you know, the, the days of, of having an agent and scanning by IP addresses are, are gone. And so it's very constrained um, according to trying to shoehorn those old technologies into new modern clouds. And so the other challenge is, is how close to real time are you monitoring? The, the funny thing is, is when we try to bring in those controls that we had from those legacy data centers and, you know, we're allowed to scan on that one Sunday, the first Sunday of the month um, at midnight, um, you know, that, that becomes a problem when you can change the environment in, in minutes and then you have 29 more days to discover that. So you need to, you know, that, that's a big risk, not being able to monitor things in real time. And then as these environments are spinning up and down, it is literally a finger click away from making something externally accessible, which is quite a bit of risk. And then one of my favorites is where is the sensitive data? So not only are you spinning up and able to move and move at the speed of your business and scale, um, some of that sensitive data may scale across other environments that it didn't intend to. So do you really know where your sensitive data is? So when I look at you know, a strategy, what would a CISO, in my opinion, should do for entering the cloud and being innovative and trying to support that is really enable the business. You know, go to them and say, it's okay, we can figure this out because um, there's great controls in the cloud, um, but you have to deploy more. You have to align to industry best practices and, and um, those frameworks for um, alignment to scalability and deployment. I kind of messed up there. Is it okay to back up? You go right ahead. Okay. So with this next slide, our CISO cloud strategy, I really put them in, in four buckets to explain, you know, what your strategy really should be like in embracing the cloud. And it really comes down to, you know, enabling your business through innovation. So you want to be the champion of the cloud and you want to be part of that business decision to be in the cloud. And how you do that is with great controls, frameworks, alignments, and making sure that you have best practices. The, the next silo and the next part of that strategy is getting full visibility. And when we say full visibility, we, we talked about, you know, the modern cloud. The, the IP address is sometimes gone. Um, you can't get an agent in those spaces. So when we say full visibility, we mean the, the configuration scripts, the identity and access management components, all the things that make up that whole cloud environment. You know, do you really, can you see all that? And you want to be able to do that. Once you see all that, just seeing it once a month and that vulnerability scan is not enough anymore. You need to see it in real time or near real time. And so you need to be proactive and, and report on what you see and get the development teams and the infrastructure and the architecture teams together to talk about what that environment is and what's the business reasons for those environments. Then once you do all those three things, you can really inspire confidence in the cloud. And so as you're asked through the executive teams or through those um, board meetings or with regulators or examiners, you can really talk about the cloud and be confident in the story that, that yes, the cloud is secure and we are better than best practices and we're doing the right things. So why did Live Oak choose Orca as a partner? And um, for this slide, you know, really culture of security, innovation, visibility, you heard all those things. And then I have a word I call proaction. So it's, um, it's really taking um, proaction is turning proactivity into a noun and making it part of your strategy. So let's work backwards. Let's, let's, let's make decisions that we can really take action with great visibility, with innovation, and we can build a culture of security that makes a difference in our environment. And so we're going to talk about that. We're going to go backwards now um, to promote 
a culture of security. So one of the things that um, that ORCA does really well is I give you great information, but you got to take that information and do something with it. And so I started with this because it's so important. It's really one of those pillars of the strategies that you need in order to embrace a good, solid security posture in your cloud. And when you do that, it inspires confidence, not only in what you're doing, it brings those other individuals that are interacting in the cloud to participate with you in that process. Then the next part of this is about multi-cloud low friction deployment. It's really interesting um, being in the cloud and embracing it for so long. You, you find that, that it's so easy to move and be very innovative and, and um, you find environments being spun up quite a bit and um, you know, everybody gets creative all of a sudden. Um, so you know, multi-cloud, when you think you have one cloud, think again, because you're gonna have multiples and you need to prepare for that. And so when you have those multiple clouds, you need to make sure that the tools that you put in there are impact free because you know, they're moving fast and you wanna embrace that innovation and you wanna make sure that you're not um, tapping the brakes as, as you go, only tap the brakes when you need to. And so really going to the second bullet is frictionless DevOps infrastructure and security teams is really about bringing everybody together to talk about what you see in those multiple environments. And when something new pops up, you know, you have the story, you have the narrative to talk to those teams about uh, those environments. And I'll be honest with you, Orca, when they, when we started talking with them, um, they said, Hey, give us a POC. We'll in 15 minutes, maybe a little bit more, we'll deploy. And um, a couple hours later, you'll have data about your incomplete real estate cloud posture. And I thought, no way. Well, they did it. It was um, hugely valuable to us. And um, I'm completely sold that it's a great product, completely impact free. Uh, Avi, did you want to say something here? Yeah. So thanks, uh, Thomas. I think that this is the point that literally can't be stressed enough the importance of reducing the friction when deploying security tools. I think that we as an industry, we like to talk about complex uh, and advanced tools. And our weakest point is how well is it, what is the coverage? How wide is it deployed? And at the end of the day, there is some communication that is happening between security teams and development teams and in order for the development team to change the way they work and stop developing feature and start implementing security, I think that the, that the issue of friction cannot be stressed enough. At the end of the day, friction is what's, kill, what's killing security within large organizations. There is so many things to do and getting other departments to stop what they're doing to deploy security tool, to have and inject the means to audit them, simply is not going to happen. In order to be certain that the security teams have the visibility they need within the environment, this needs to be achieved in a cloud native way that doesn't require the team to work in a different way. If you're required and teams told them to change the way they work just to be able to audit them, it's simply not going to work in today's world. Thank you. And then, um, you know, kind of wrapping this business enablement up is about how do you scale? And so, you know, that's a, a, a great benefit of the cloud is being able to scale up and down to meet new business challenges and to be competitive. And so, um, you know, with with Orca, we're able to see that scaling as it goes. We We do scans more often. We don't wait to the end of the month. Um, we have daily scans and we compare those scans and we have information about our environments and to understand, you know, what our teams are doing. And we can do this without dependence on agents or appliances. So as they scale these environments, cloud formation script goes off, builds a new environment. Um, we don't have to reach out to them and say, hey, did you guys put an agent there? Or can the agent reach the appliances or all those challenges that go along with, with moving fast? Um, we see these spaces and we can, the, the conversations are different. It's more about, okay, tell me what you're doing here and let's try to understand where we can help. And then moving to the next level of um, the next area is full cloud visibility. 
Let me just start over there. Boy, I got tongue tied. So um, for the next slide is full cloud visibility. And, and I really stopped the bullets here to talk about full stack cloud visibility. And it really means more than, than what um, is kind of represented there if you're new to the cloud. Um, what it means is this deep visibility. It goes beyond IP-based scanning. So um, in modern cloud environments, you may not always have a, a device with an IP address, and you may not have the ability to put an agent on those devices. And so having a full stack view means you get to see everything. Um, all the services that someone has embraced, all the rules that someone has decided to turn on, all the things that matter to that environment. Now, what that allows you to do is focus your energy on what's important. So um, you'll find that, that we're already taxed too much. And so focusing on what's important as a, as a security team, we can focus on those real time risk detections, the ones that matter. So those medium risks that may not, we may not think they're medium, but if someone automatically, auto, but if someone accidentally puts those on the internet as externally exposed, that's a different story. The, the medium factor has just escalated to either high or critical. And so when we talk about full stack, we're talking about an inventory of everything that you have in your class, uh, in your cloud. It's your whole asset inventory. So your accounts, containers, databases, virtual servers, storage boxes, storage devices, um, policies, users, all those great data points that's in there that makes up that complete cloud, um, you get insight into that. Avi, I went uh, ahead too soon. Did you want to say anything? Yeah. Quick comment, and I want to really emphasize how, how unique this capability is. And this is something that we simply didn't add before the cloud and we couldn't achieve. We all, as a security professional for years, worked hard to try to achieve the high covering wide coverage of the environments and we knew that we don't have it. We knew that we are covering part of the environments which we see 50, 60, 70 percent. None of us expected to reach 100 percent coverage because we knew that we need to install tools but today we can do that. And furthermore, this is the most important thing as Thomas mentioned about focusing on what's important. When we analyzed environments in the past in the on-premise world, we didn't know the impact. We didn't know if they are connected to the internet, if they are connected to a load balancer. To get this context, we needed to get data which was fragmented. Both of these are things of the past. Today, you can have this full visibility of anything within the environment with an automatic understanding of what's important, simply because all of that is available in cloud-native ways. And so moving on to the, the next bullet about, um, you know, near real-time threat and vulnerability management. So now that you have that full stack visibility, you can see all of the things in your space. Um, what are you doing about it? How often? Is it only that you get to see these um, this space on that one time a month that you're allowed to go through a change control, raise your hand, and get approval to consume resources to scan the environment? Orca is different. Uh, we get to choose when we get to see our environment. Um, we can make changes and then scan again and have a clean bill of health. So it really takes it to a different level. We're going beyond those legacy agent-based, IP-based vulnerability scannings and, you know, those fix it and then scan at the end of the month and or the end of the quarter and, and hopefully you got it right and then doing it all over again. Um, we really get to move at the speed of the cloud and the business and where they want to go. What this allows us to do is detect, detect risks fast. And we get that proactive response. And I, I talked about that proaction. Um, so we can really add these, the, uh, we can make our strategy whole by really detecting those risks fast and having that conversation with the dev the architecture, the infrastructure team, all those individuals. 
And so um, the next thing is really about gaining insights into lateral movements. And, you know, there is a antivirus and some malware detection. There's a lot of great tools in Orca that they provide. Um, what I wanted to talk about here was how we use it at Live Oak. So um, when we first deployed Orca, we did a scan and got a complete inventory and it gave us great insight. Um, but as we scan every single day, we have insight into how the environment's changed. And so, you know, not only do you get those malicious actors trying to laterally move through your environment, you get insight into something like that. Um, you also get insight into your internal workflows. How are the developers taking a cloud formation script and creating it in a whole new environment and maybe possibly creating, bringing in some of the data that was there that was supposed to stay there because that's a sensitive environment and now it's showing up in, a, in an orphan state somewhere else. So the insights is just hugely valuable to us in those lateral movements and understanding you know, what our cloud looks like. And then we can prioritize what's important. We can go to that developer and say, why did you create this space? Oh, I'm sorry, let's, let's get rid of it. And you know, we can have that conversation. And then the near time, near real time reporting is really important because what we found is that when we reach out to those dev teams, when they have their chapter agile chapter meetings, uh, we can come in with real data that makes a difference. And not only do they know that we're in, in involved in interacting with them, they become security components within our own process. They become that pro action team uh, with us to, to make a difference. And then the, the last slide is really about inspiring confidence. Probably the um, most important thing we can do as, as security officers at our respective organizations is, is, is inspire confidence in those clouds. So, you know, the business is moving, trying to make the best decisions for being competitive. They're stressed out about making decisions about the cloud, the compliance people, everybody is a little stressed. Um, so when you align the best practice frameworks and, and compliance best practices, um, you inspire confidence in your environments and, and everything that you do. And Orca helps us do that. And for Live Oak's purposes, um, every time that we scan, um, we look for the Center for Internet Security, Security Benchmark Framework. How do we align to that? Now, that's a great best practice framework to tell us, you know, give us a true heartbeat of what our cloud looks like. And the great thing is, is that as we make changes, we don't have to wait to the end of the month or some agent to be on a machine to do, to see, you know, what our progress is. We could have a meeting every week if we wanted to and show the infrastructure team exactly the benefits they're making to their organization. And then for us being a bank, um, there's a lot of um, guidance, cloud banking guidances that are coming out. Um, I indicated the FFIC, but there's a lot of agencies that roll into that that um, you know, make how you present your best practice alignment and your um, security posture extremely important to those uh, examiners and, and auditors and compliance folks. And then last, I saved the last for um, data stack visibility. Um, you know, for me being a longtime security professional, I, um, you know, it's one thing to secure things, but if your data just gets copied and, and orphaned all over the place, you know, how, how, how comfortable can you really be? And that's why it's here um, in the Inspire Confidence area in that Orca allows us to see where that data is. So when we first initially scanned our environment, we got to see where our sensitive data was. Hopefully, you know, no one's surprised by that, but if you are, you get to now create boundaries and pick the right places and the right security controls to put around that. You can see where that orphan data is, where someone replicated or copied data somewhere that it, it shouldn't have been. Another interesting thing that we found was we found embedded authentication and encryption key data in some of our, our formation scripts. So it gave us the ability to go to our teams and say, you know what, there might be a better way to do this. Um, sh should we figure something out um, so that this can be different? And, you know, key stores and other um, great technologies allowed us to, to create solutions that improve that, that ability. And then ultimately, you know, it came down to the culture of security and, and how we can really embrace innovation, how we can um, take our business to the next level instead of, you know, being the ones that apply the brakes. Um, we can have the conversation to apply the brakes together. And so it's really become an involvement without interruption. 
And so um, that was um, that was our present my presentation for you know embracing the cloud and you know getting comfortable with cloud controls and and Orca has been one of those providers and partners for us that has really taken a lot of tools and narrowed it down to one great tool that really gives us great insight and solves a lot of problems. So, um, Avi, did you want to say anything um, to close us out? And just, Thomas, thank you for uh, your support. We enjoyed the partnership with you and your team. And I really think the main essence here is what Tom said. We want organizations like like Bank and others that want to leverage the cloud for what it really is wants to move fast. You don't want to slow, you don't want the security to delay the business. The business wants to move fast, but at the same time, it needs to audit. And the key is not to try to copy the same paradigms and tools that we use on the free cloud world to the cloud and try to make it work because it simply won't, but try to use the cloud for what it is to use the inherent capabilities that allow platform like Orca to scan it without changing the cloud itself, in order to have the certainty of allowing the development teams to work while knowing what they do. And this allows moving and going securely and fast in the cloud. Well, very good. Avi, Thomas, I want to thank you both for your time, for your insights, and I really appreciate your presentation. And then for each of our attendees. Thank you so much for taking time to attend this session today. I hope you enjoyed this. You've had some good questions for us here. I'm sure you'll have some additional questions as well. Please give us feedback on this session. We'd love to hear your input on our speakers and our topics and what you would like to see at future summits. Again, for Information Security Media Group, I'm Tom Field. Thank you for attending this session.